Good morning everyone. My name is Sarah and I'm the Marketing and Events Coordinator here at Hornbill. I'd like to welcome and thank you for joining today's webinar where we will be having a presentation on collaborative ITSM changing the way people work with Pat Bolger and Bob Dickinson here at Hornbill. Just to inform you, Delegate Auto will be muted during the presentation to help facilitate flow and timekeeping. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the GoToMeeting question facility on the right hand side of your screen. We will collate questions and answer, answer them at the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for taking the time to attend. I will now pass you over to Pat and Bob. Hi everybody, I'm um, Patrick Bolger, Hornbill's Chief Evangelist and um, <clears throat> today we're running a Hornbill Academy event and the webinar is entitled Collaborative ITSM, Changing the Way People Work. Uh, you'll see at the bottom of the screen here, there is actually a, a URL for the other Hornbill events that will be going on, the Academy events. Um, I'll send you a reminder about that or give you a reminder about that towards the end um, and then we can uh, discuss some of the events that are actually coming up. But if you have a look at that URL at any stage, you can register for forthcoming events. So, uh, right, oh, hold on. let me just, having a slight problem. There we go, there we go. So yeah, so as I said, I'm Patrick Bolger. My Twitter handle is there and I have with me Bob Dickinson. Bob is one of our product specialists. Um, I'm going to give you some of the kind of highlights, if you like, about collaboration and why we need to think about more effective ways of working. Then Bob's going to take us through a run through some of the collaborative features in Home Service Manager so you can get a good handle on the types of things that you can do within your organization. So I'm going to be using a few pictures here to indicate why do we need to change the way people work. This to me speaks a thousand words. Um, it's a picture that was taken at the election of um, Pope Benedict XVI in 2005. And you'll see in the crowd on the bottom right hand side, there's this one single mobile phone. This is an image taken eight years later in 2013 at the election of um, Pope Francis. And what we can see here is a sea of different uh, digital devices. And basically the fact that we all carry around powerful computers with us at all times has changed everything. What it's also done is to transform the pace of uh, business. Uh, so technology, um, the, the classic case here is, we'll say Blockbuster versus Netflix. Um, organizations aren't adapting or haven't adapted in the way that they can to technology. And this is actually number one reason for, for failing companies. What you'll see here is a representation of the Standard & Poor's 500 index. And back in the late 50s, early 60s, the average tenure of an organization on the S&P 500 was around 50, 60 years. You'll see that that has dropped in the mid kind of 2010s to so about 15 years and it's forecast to drop even further. So this is basically a warning signal for all of us that actually if we're not able to adapt to technological change, then we face huge, uh, huge problems as a business. 21st century IT is setting new expectations uh, about how technology is used and it's, it's prevalent within consumer technology. You'll see here the user experience moving from a, a GUI to a, a touch next generation mobile and even voice these days. IT delivery coming from data centers into cl uh, clouds and browsers. So everything's changed, but more importantly, the expectations of how technology is used has also changed dramatically. So now people expect to be able to use technology on any device, anytime, anywhere, virtually unlimited storage, things like drag and drop design, loosely coupled integrations, um, and they expect them to be collaborative by design. So a lot of tools coming out these days to help you with that type of thing. So why do we need to pay attention to this? Well, if you've, unless you've been living under a rock for the last little while, you would have heard something called, called digital transformation. So digital transformation, what's that about? Well, essentially here, I define uh, my definition of it is uh, it's about how well people work together to move friction from the service experience and deliver value to the customer. So everything here revolves around the customer experience as it shows within this image. Um, people often talk about the smack stack, that means social mobile analytics and cloud. Um, things like customer journey mapping, uh, understanding um, some of your metrics, big data, that type of thing are all important. What we tend to ignore is the fact that underneath this smack stack lives an entire organization. 
its business model, its business processes, organizational processes, and this whole kind of um, digital transformation is all about how those connect and how well they work together to deliver value back to the customer. So it does mean a big shift in what we do and how we do it. The first thing in that shift is what I call the commercial mindset. So now it's just because you're working in IT, it's no longer good enough to not have a really good handle on what your business does, who your customers are, how they're using your products or services, um, who your competition is, what that competition is using from a techn technology standpoint, and what uh, you could do to actually improve the lot of your organization and move it uh, closer towards its goals. What that actually means is from a, um, from a, um, a, a standpoint of actually delivering projects and stuff like that, it's no longer good enough to just deliver projects on time and on, on budget. We now want to see results, whether that's kind of creating stickier customers, whether it's increasing revenue, delivering markets, uh, sorry, softer products or products to market faster than ever before. We're talking about results. And what that means is that we have to have a, a laser focus on the customer and act as one team with one goal, whatever that goal happens to be. So, I've stolen this from a guy called Dion Hinchcliffe. Um, he's well worth following on Twitter if you don't already. But um, he divides the, the experience into three different distinct areas, the total digital experience or holistic experience into the customer experience, which if we work in IT, we may feel that we can't influence that much. Maybe you can. Uh, supplier partner experience, we certainly can have an experience there. But the one that we influence most is that worker experience. And you see the one in the middle, it says that what we need is collaboration, effective tools, trust, meaningful work, growth, and autonomy. So what we had to do is to get very serious about collaboration. So what it defines collaboration as here is the action of working jointly on an activity, a project, or goal. So one of the things I looked uh, to do last year's um, Hornbill Insights event uh, is to get a kind of feel for how people were collaborating. And I found this image online to basically say that here, here are the top methods of collaboration. Emails top with 85%, face-to-face -face meetings, phone calls, virtual meetings, uh, and instant messaging. So email front and center for collaboration. Problem with that is that email is not a fantastic collaboration tool. Here's a, a, an indication of some of the unproductive stuff we do in the workplace. I'll show you where I get the data from um, in, in a moment. So you see the bottom left, <clears throat> email and instant messaging are still growing. So email is not a bad thing here. It allows us to do certain things, but um, it does mean that we spend an awful lot of unproductive time. And you'll see the top left, it says 28% of the work week um, a, a worker spends managing their email. Um, bottom right, it says we spend 20% of our time looking for internal information. We spend 31 hours in unproductive meetings. And with 37.2% of the... Uh, the workforce mobile, we need to find better ways of doing things. As I mentioned, email is not great for collaboration, and here's the reason why. So there's the data that this comes from. Here's your reason why. So you'll see here, simple concept on the left-hand side, someone basically emails four of their colleagues with an idea. Two of those colleagues reply to them, two of them reply to each other, and, and basically it just resides in someone's inbox. Uh, other people who might have a voice and might have a better ideas or can contribute to this idea, just don't get to have a say. Well, in a collaborative environment, that changes dramatically because once you post an idea or a comment or a um, share content into a workspace, whoever wants to engage with that can. So the best ideas usually find their way to the top and poor ideas get left by the wayside or people respond and say, why we can't do this particular thing to make our business better. So why do we need to collaborate? First and foremost, it moves the company effectively towards its goals. A, a work.com study found that 70% of employees and executives agreed that the level of collaboration directly impacts the outcome of a task or a project. When a team is collaborating smoothly, openly sharing information and able to communicate with each other seamlessly, they're able to do their best work at the most effective level. On the other hand, when employees work in silos, it can take longer for a team to finish a particular project or task. The most effective workspaces will balance individual focus with team collaboration, and collaboration technology enables that balance because it seamlessly links end users when collaboration makes sense rather than doing it all day every day. 
Second is it creates more flexibility. In today's environment, um, things like smartphones and tablets allow employees to work more flexibly than just a traditional nine to five office day. Many users work from home and they even take advantage of real-time collaboration with remote co-workers co around the globe. This level of flexibility fits most people's lifestyle better than a strict hour working day and improved flexibility can lead to greater efficiency and effectiveness. In fact, a 16-year-old study by Champ Idea Champions found that only 3% of people come up with their best ideas at work and the other 97% that said they encounter great ideas throughout the day, at home or on holiday or even in the shower. So at mobile capabilities uh, with collaboration technologies, workers can take advantage of sudden bursts of creati creativity and productivity. However, I wouldn't recommend doing that in the shower with your mobile device. <laughs> Third is it appeals to the tech savvy. The fact is that we have more younger tech savvy employees in the workplace and they, they do, do gravitate towards collaboration technologies. Um, one study found that about 49% of that age group supports social tools such as Skype and FaceTime for collaboration in the workspace. And since millennials are taking over the workspace, it's now time for employers to sit up and take notice. It does engage remote and, and working from home employees. Um, sometimes these people can feel cut off from their co-workers. And if you can foster a high level of collaboration, a company can ensure that all its employees, whether they're working from home or from a, a, a headquarters or an overseas office, can do real time continual communication. And that level of engagement means that a company benefits from the knowledge and expertise of all employees, no matter where they are. It also helps new employees get up to speed. They learn best from their coworkers and managers and that's better achieved through collaboration. And on top of that, collaboration creates a natural mentor-mentee relationship between new employees and their veteran counterparts to inspire and engage both groups even more. So collaboration, what are we talking about here? Specifically, and this is really important, we're talking about the, the capability to work out loud. So this is where you place your work out in the open, you narrate your own work, and you actually encourage people to comment on it. So this creates a, an environment where you get this open dialogue, people contributing, people kind of arguing for a better idea, but it does encourage those ideas. And when everyone has a voice, it's much, much easier to engage experts. So you pull experts in, you ask them for their, um, their ideas, their solutions to particular problems. And when they share that information, it becomes easy to capture that and put it out there for the benefit of the entire community. It also improves communication right across the piece. And as it says here, if we're after value, you get that through increased productivity. And you get increased productivity by collaborating with others and doing your best work with them. Okay, so let me show you some of the features that um, I suppose Bob is not going to be dwelling on these too much, but I, some of the highlights of working out loud and creating a more transparent and visible environment. So one of the things we focused on with Home of Service Manager, this concept of simplicity. So the concept here is that rather than having a form with loads and loads of buttons and boxes and tabs and fields and stuff like that, we, we just create simplicity by basically configuring a series of questions that you ask the customer or the analysts can ask the customer as they deal with uh, particular types of requests. When that happens, we also set up something uh, called a, a progress tracker or a heads up display or whatever you want to call it. And what this does, it just basically gives complete visibility, not only to the service desk analysts, but also to their customers of what actually needs to happen for a request to be serviced. We have this concept as well of mentions and notifications. So if, for example, say I want to pull an expert like Bob, who's helping me here on this uh, on this presentation. If I want to pull him into a conversation, I just go at Bob, it mentions him, and Bob gets a notification to say, hey, Pat, need your help here. Um, can you step in and, and give him a hand? What that also means is that he can, he can actually mention something that's really useful to me. I can like that or I can follow a given request. And by liking things, when lots and lots of people like them, all of that, those likes actually bring good knowledge to the top. So it's there for everyone to see. Really simple stuff, but it makes a huge difference. Uh, the ability to kind of embed rich media, so things like images and videos into timelines actually explains an awful lot. As I said before, a picture speaks a thousand words. Um, you also have this concept of achievements. So as Napoleon said, men will die for ribbons. Um, so when you recognize that someone's doing good work, when you recognize they've, they've gone the extra mile, 
you can with Service Manager actually award them, and you can run a little uh, a little scorecard to to create that healthy level of competition in the office and to get more from your people. What we've also done here is taken this concept of um, the the progress tracker heads up display and basically roll that out to give more visibility of what's happening within a, a given channel. So you'll see here this is just the various stages of a, a change management process. And as it moves from one stage to the next, it fires off activities for individuals to, to perform, which is great because the customer and the analyst get complete visibility and you can see at a glance where you are in the process. What's even more important is the facility to do this. This is something we call boards. What you have is various swim lanes. So this is just a change management board. You'll see the swim lanes are incoming, assessed, WIC cab, approved, out for release, review, et cetera, et cetera. What this does, it allows me to just take one glance at this and basically understand what's what's coming our way, what's in the queue, what are we dealing with. Um, more importantly, I mentioned following before, uh, if I will say sent in a service request that would result in a change, by just following that, the information comes out and finds me as a customer or an analyst. I was talking to uh, a couple of our customers about the facility to, to use these boards to make change more agile. Um, and it was great fellows at Great Ormond Street Hospital who initially said, we used to have 10 to 15 people in a room uh, for 90 minutes every week. And basically, they started to do this. And that the last cab meeting that they did was done in 11 minutes flat. So roughly, if you work out about 10 people saving roughly 80 minutes a day, that works out to 80 working days a year, which is massive for an organization that's resource strapped. But what this allows you to do is to communicate in advance. So if you, before you go to a cab meeting, you can basically discuss whatever projects, whatever changes you got going on at that particular point in time. And this working out in the open and showing your information, your workload out in the open, changes everything. So our intention here, and I've used the image here of a, a, an iPhone and just your regular, uh, your regular um, old fashioned mobile phone. So. Why would you buy an iPhone and just send texts and make calls? So what we wanted you to do here is to get the most from Hornbill. And Bob will now be showing you through how to do that. So collaborative ITSM, Bob is going to present some stuff to you. It's uh, focused on the Hornbill news feed, the profile, activity, tasks, and views, workspaces and conversations, and the global search bar. So Bob, can you uh, step in and give us a hand there? Thanks very much for that, Pat. Yeah, just to in introduce myself, um, my name's Bob Dickinson. Um, I'm a product specialist here at Hornbill. Uh, a few of you might have already uh, spoken to me before who are on the call. But um, as he mentioned, I'm going to be covering a few of the areas that he just demonstrated, a few that he uh, he didn't as well. Um, so if I just open up uh, Hornbill here. So I'm going to be logging in um, as Graham and Basically, start off and just running through some of the collaboration features. Now, in Hornbill, collaboration is actually an app that um, comes with the platform, um, and it is kind of a mandatory app because it runs through everything. Nearly all of the other apps that we have all use collaboration one way or another. So it's extremely important from a functional perspective. There's individual components that come with the collaboration app, but a lot of them actually are embedded in everything else. So I'm going to talk through some of that today and just guide you through how you might want to use that. So the first screen that you can see here is actually one of our brand new features. Um, it's our new um, home screen. You can kind of see you've got lots of information here um, in relation to your almost working day. It relates to different apps, different um, social objects that you're following. You can see activities recently viewed and all of this is actually configurable. So you can actually change these. These are called widgets and we've got widget settings up at the top here. And if you want to um, remove any of these, if they're not relevant to you, if you don't want to have activities there, you can simply delete, you can resize, and you can move this around and save it. And this is actually set on a personal basis. So uh, everyone in your organization who's a collaborative user can have their own particular view. I'm just going to focus on the newsfeed um, to begin with. So you can actually access the newsfeed directly from the widget. If we click on this, this basically gives you, as Pat was saying, all the information that is going to be finding you based on the social objects that you follow. So this can be relating to multiple different things. We've got workspaces, which is a big component I'll be covering in a moment. Um, you've got uh, documentation, if you've got document manager installed, you've got incidents, um, basically lots and lots of different 
components of the different apps that you follow or you're a member of or the, you're the owner of will all, all appear whenever there's updates made to them. It's a bit like other social media platforms, which, you know, for example, LinkedIn or Twitter, where the most recent updates will appear at the top. What you also get is your buzz. Uh, your buzz is a way of almost having your own wall. So you can, um, in theory, post content, post information to your followers, whoever chooses to follow you, and that will appear in their newsfeed. Uh, so, for example, here I might put something like um, latest annual report is now available. If I post that, you can see it, appear, it appears at the top of my news feed, and then anyone who's following me will also see that. Pat was also mentioning about likes. You simply click the like, that gives it a like. You can like your own post. And then very important as well is the comments against these posts. So, um, for example, I could put my own comment and say something along the lines of, please can everyone read and comment. Now, with this, it's not just a case of this uh, plain text. You can actually format this with something that we call wiki markup. Now, there's lots of wiki markup. Um, it's, in theory, a way of, as I say, formatting or making your text uh, more appealing to visually. Um, all of the wiki markup options we have are available on our wiki, which is wiki.hornbill.com. If you simply search the terms wiki markup, you'll find them all. But to give you a little example, uh, if we wanted to make this bold, I can just put three single quotes either side of it. And we've got a little option here which will show you a little preview of what the wiki markup will look like before you post it. So you can see it shows in bold. If I was to remove a quote from either side and do that again, that will show you in, in, in italics. So there's plenty of different options there um, which you can use. Um, the final one I'll just show you here, if I decided to put a star in front, that will be a bullet point. Uh, just press enter to post there and um, that will post and that will also appear on uh, as an update or a notification to whoever follows you. As well as this, you might have seen as I was typing there, you've got um, the ability to do upload images, which is what Pat was talking about earlier, um, or even into emojis wherever you need to. Um, there's a couple of other little options that we have as well. Um, for example, I've got a post down here which says we have guests in the office, please ensure parking is available. If you are in any post, and by the way, all of this is not just on your buzz, it's anywhere where you can post and comment on the Hornbill. So for example, timelines of requests, um, the timelines of assets in uh, collaboration around documents, all this functionality is available and uh, ready to use. But just to show you another option you might not, not be aware of, if you put a forward slash anywhere, you also get the option to select some individual information here. So. I might actually want to link to one of the existing contacts within Hornbill. So we've got here, we have guests in the office. If I choose contact, it will give you a list of all of the contacts that you've got. I've not got many, but if I did have more, you can still filter that down just by putting uh, additional lettering in. And you can see if I now put a post, that will actually put, form a link to that particular contact so it performs it dynamically. You'll also see a few other options we've got there. We've got um, the option for emojis to link documents, even Giphy if you want, which gives you kind of from the Giphy website. If you want to post something about your birthday, for example, you could do the Giphy for cake and it will bring up some type of a cake Giphy as well, which you can post up, which just makes, again, everything a little bit more visually appealing. It pops things out on the screen. Um, and also, hopefully, it will uh, get more people using it if they can see it can be used for different purposes. Uh, I'm just going to very quickly also show you mentions. Uh, if I pop back to the top here, um, I'm just going to, uh, let's mention my colleague, Alan. So with an app, mention him if I just post that. You can see he's had a mention on this particular post. And if I switch to Alan's profile now, so this is good morning, Alan. He will have a notification up in the top, which is your notifications file, which says that he's been mentioned. Um, this will also appear within all of your other notifications that you might have. So he could filter that down by simply clicking on the mentions. He's only got one, so it filters it anyway. But what that would do if he clicked on it, take him directly to where he was mentioned. So again, that really easy, quick and easy way of collaborating around um, particular areas where you want people to see. Just popping back to um, Graham's profile, you'll also see that we've got the ability to um, ask questions as posts. So to ask a question, you simply would put your content at the top here and then pose it as a question with the ask a question and you can tell the difference between normal posts and questions because of the green border that you have around them 
you can see Graham here asked the question previously in relation to um, uh, sh uh, VPN software and uh, and asking if people have answers. And what you can the way this works is if people answer it, it becomes an answer which is votable. So you can then see here you've got a particular person who's got four. Uh, likes on his particular answer, his particular vote, and then Graham or whoever posted it can vote themselves and it becomes the poster's choice and makes its way to the top of the comments. Again, for that kind of tacit knowledge, so information that's searchable and used in the future instead of being stored in people's heads or through emails. Another nice little example of collaboration here is also the translate option. This is, again, we've got translation through the entire Hornbill platform, but if you are posting in a different language or you've got your language set uh, someone is posting with a different language to what you have set, you'll see this option called Translate, and it will use Google Translate to be able to kind of try or attempt a Google translation for you, which again makes things so much easier for that interna international based collaboration. Moving on slightly from the um, news feed, one other little thing you might have noticed up in the top here is Harry Hornbill. Now, this um, isn't so much a collaborative feature, but it's useful to know in terms of new features, which may be collaborative features. He will pop up every now and then when we've got a feature which we think you might be interested in or your users may be interested in. If you click it, you can kind of see information. You can see on this particular example, we've got something new in relation to document manager and the search capabilities. You can vote that if you want to uh, tell us if you like it or if you don't think that's particularly useful or want to provide some feedback. If you click got it, it will dismiss that notification or you could choose to read this later and uh, keep him up there. So for whenever you want to um, have the time to have a look through those new features. Hopefully you won't get too annoying. We don't pop him up all the time. It's not going to become like the Microsoft Office paperclip, which uh, I know annoyed quite a few people. But the purpose is for, it's basically for your benefit to ensure you're keeping up to date with all the new stuff that we built, bring into Hornbill on a continuous deployment basis. OK, now. You can access collaborative options if you click on your top left hand menu item under the home option. If you hover over, you can see most of the options here are all in relation to the collaboration app. I'm going to work through a few of these today. I'm um, starting here or moving on, I should say, to my profile. So this is your own personal profile where you can kind of update and edit any information that you require. Now, we've already had a look at the buzz, which is like your personal wall. Moving on to the About tab here, this, along with the information that's coming in perhaps on an automated basis, if you have ALDAP or some AD functionality set up to bring in your, deep, your, deep, your customer base on a nightly basis, you can also update your own information in relation to other areas. So, for example, you've got interests and expertise down here. Um, if we went to edit this, you might actually want to put in some qualifications and training. So you could put in ITIL. Um, you can hide this information as well or, or edit it. So to do that as an admin, you've got a design option up here. And when you click on this, it gives you the option to either hide particular attributes that we've got. You can simply move them around and drag by drag and drop, or you might choose to add a brand new one. So here I'm going to add one that's well, already on there uh, with the display label. Uh, let's just put something like formal certifications. You've got different uh, kind of field types that you can select from there. But if I click apply, I might drag this just to below the qualifications and training, apply the changes. And what this now allows you to do is have another attribute where your user base can come in here and actually populate all of their formal certifications. From a collaborative point of view, this is really useful if you're trying to find the best person to do the job. Uh, if you've got something interesting uh, or you need a task doing or you've got um, We'd just like to find some further information about your colleagues. Having some additional information here can be really beneficial. You can even use this information within business process for automation as well. So it does have multiple benefits if you would like to use that. The achievements is something we'll be coming on to in a moment. Uh, Pat did allude to it, but this kind of just lists the achievements that you might have gained. Connections shows you not just the workspaces that you're a member of, but more importantly, the people who are following you, sorry, you are following and the people who are following you. Again, a bit like friends or connections um, elsewhere on social media, it's the same type of thing. What you might choose to do is follow someone you have an interest in, and one of your collaborative co-workers. Um, to do this, I might navigate potentially to, I'm gonna navigate to my friend Alan again, hover over him, and you've got the option there to follow. Now, if I move back to my profile, 
it should now show that I'm following. And what that means is when, Ad, um, when Alan posts anything on his buzz, that will appear at the top of my newsfeed. Alan will have been notified as well that uh, he's got a brand new follower up here. Uh, he might choose to dismiss that. But again, it kind of gives you that collaboration between your, uh, your internal workforce there. Um, moving on on your profile, you've got settings. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the system settings because most of them are fairly explanatory. Uh, one of the most important ones is your language. As I say, it's very important for translation because from here, this will not only change all the labels, but give you that translate button, which allow for, for users who are posting in a different language to the one that you have set here. You got some notifications. Now I will be honest, this isn't all of the notifications in Hallmill. This is a subset, but it does give you some flexibility about what you get notified um, on. And if you want, and based on the browser that you have, you can also enable desktop kind of toast cell so pop-up notifications, which will pop up in the bottom right hand corner based on different functionality. You simply click the enable button and then choose which ones you want for that as well. Pat mentioned how important mobile collaboration is these days. Um, the devices option allows you to connect your smart device uh, to your profile, which is particularly useful if you have some type of single sign-on um, functionality set up in Hornbill. This connects a device to a user to bypass that logon so that you can always be logged into Hornbill and be notified um, on your mobile device. It's a very simple setup. You would simply download the app from either the um, Apple Store or the uh, Play Store based on your device. Once you've downloaded it and start going through the registration process, if you come into your profile and add in the type of device you are logging, so I might choose iPhone, you then get here, a, well, both a, an authorization code and a QR code, which you will be prompted for as you're going through the registration process. So that is how it connects the, to the device to your profile without needing a username and password and without needing necessarily to be on your network. Uh, you can kind of see what you've got pending. You can have multiple devices associated with one user. If you're not going to use it, you can simply remove that if you don't need it anymore. Change password, again, pretty self-explanatory, but if you aren't using single sign-on, you have the ability here to change your local Hornbill password to log in. Your own profile, you can have a look at any assets that you are the owner or the user of, so the ones that are associated to you. And one of our newer features is the service manager option. So again, obviously only if you've got the service manager app installed, but you can look at anyone's profile in Hornbill now and it will filter down any requests that they've had that are open or closed. You've got all the filtering options. So you don't need to kind of be creating a new view or a new filter every single time for every individual user. So really useful if you want to kind of quickly find which open requests an individual has in Hornbill. You've even got the ability to raise a new one on their behalf from within their profile. So a really nice little feature you've got there now. Two other things on the profiles, you've got your status. Um, this allows you to set when you're not basically available, uh, whether you're on holiday or out of office. If I choose on holiday and I'll say, I'll be back on August uh, the 1st. If I save that, you'll notice up in the top right, it gives you a kind of orange notifier to show you as, a, as an individual that you've set your uh, kind of your set, you've set yourself to not available. But the other real nice benefit of this is one of your colleagues, if they're using Service Manager, so I'm just going to quickly open up any request within Hornbill. Let's pick up this one. If they go to um, assign this to you, you'll see now that Graham has actually got the little notification that says he's on holiday. So it might give them that little prompt and that second thought as to whether to assign it when someone's not available. If you hover over it, you can even see the message that Graham's left there. So it kind of gives you that collaboration and that notification across different people who might be looking at your profile or even within different apps. Um, the other thing about the status as well is that if you do set it to anything that's not available, so any of the other ones, if you do have any automated kind of service management routing, so for example, assigning requests on a round robin basis or a most available analyst, it will not include them within that. It only includes people who have their status set to available. So I'm just going to set that back so that I can still be assigned requests automatically. And the final thing, pictures, um, it's really, from a collaboration point of view, we use this internally and we, we you know, ensure that we all have a profile picture set. It just looks a lot better across all the timelines, anywhere that you're collaborating, when you can see the image, it becomes second nature. You kind of then associate an image with an individual. Um, and it just, um, well, in my opinion, it looks a bit better than having kind of the default 
first letter that appears as your kind of profile picture if you do not set a picture. So you can come in here and change your image to what you want moving forwards. Okay, I'm just going to move on to um, another collaborative, collaborative option, which is activities. Now you've got this My Activities view within Hornbill. And activities are very important. They are a separate entity to requests, but you do get this kind of these different views that allow you to manage them in a really kind of efficient and easy way based on your personal configuration. So, for example, this is almost like what I would call a request list for activities. It gives you everything you need. You've got all the columns. You've got the um, if you want to add new columns, it's kind of very similar functionality to Service Manager if you're used to that. You can sort it. You can do your quick filters. If I just wanted to look for anything that had the word change in it, for example, it would quickly filter all that down for me. You've even got the same view functionality to create your own personal view. So um, again, you might want to filter this down on your own criteria. So if I added a new view here, I might just call this high priority activities. And I could quickly add in a few conditions here just to say if the uh, priority is high, create that. It, na it completely narrows down all of those activities available and it saves it for future use for me personally so I can quickly access them going forwards. Um, one of the other um, options that you have within activities is the ability to create your own ad hoc activity. Um, some of your activities may be being automatically generated via business processes, but Hornbill can be used for your own personal workload. It doesn't have to necessarily come from a process. So you down here, we've got a new icon, which allows you to create either a new activity or a new appointment. If we create a new activity from here, you can kind of see that I might create one, which is called something like perform daily checks. Uh, you can put descriptions, you can put all sorts of things here. We could choose that we want to assign this to um, the first line support team. I might choose to add a checklist here. I might call this daily checks and add an item. Let's just add one item called perform uh, server capacity checks, something along those lines. We add that as a check. You can see it starts creating your check uh, list item style functionality there. Um, and if I save that, that will then be um, assigned to that particular team and uh, available in your request list in any way you want to view it. Um, you can also schedule an activity now. So if I click, click the schedule option, you get a new button, which appears down the bottom. I'm going to, going, to, going to call this perform daily checks again. But what you can see is lots of different recurrence patterns. So if you want it to be run daily, starting from, let's say, tomorrow at, uh, we'll go from 9 a.m., I want this to be every weekday, so I'm just going to select those ones. And I want an expiry of never, so I want this to be going on um, forever. So I put minus one, which means it will it will never have like a num certain number of iterations. If I click OK and click Save, that's now my own activity that I've created and a scheduled job. And I can have a look at my scheduled activities by going back to my home view, clicking on scheduled job at the bottom here, and you can now see there's my perform daily checks, which is currently running and that uh, I have the ability to stop it if I want that to ever stop. So that will just keep generating over and over every day at the same time. And anyone who's got access will hopefully be completing that and it will appear in their views. We've also got a couple of other views for activities. So you've got a board view if you prefer to have kind of the swim lane approach and you can create your own boards with your own dynamic criteria as well. So this one here is actually based on overdue, but you might choose to have this um, based on particular words in the uh, categories or the words in the titles of the activities. So it, what it means is they would automatically appear in these swim names on these boards. Um, as well as this, we've got a calendar view. And a calendar view gives you information in relation to activities that are currently um, due this month based on the due date. So you can see here I've got one on the 27th of July of current authorization that I need to perform by then. So um, you've got different ways of viewing those. And as well as that, You've got this pop-out bar on the right-hand side. This is available anywhere within Hornbill. So wherever you are, these will always be available. So you can always be having a look at your new activities, your existing activities, the ones that are due today, the ones that are overdue, and so on. So you can kind of manage them without always having to come into your view. Okay, um, moving on. I'm going to show you something um, 
which we again we use very heavily inter internally here at Hornbill. It's called workspaces. Now, a workspace is kind of um, a collaborative area that you can create which relates to a particular topic. Um, you can kind of see here some of the examples uh, that we have on our, on our demo kits um, in particular, but we have hundreds of workspaces internally for all different purposes. Uh, from a business perspective, you can have them related to different projects, different um, components. We've got one here for change management specifically, so even teams. Um, it doesn't always have to be business. You can have, for example, company news, so something a little bit more generic, which you might have all of your company members as a member of. Or even stuff, stuff like out and about. If you are away from the office, you might want to post up images just to show where you are, what's going on, and uh, you know, just have a little bit of um, more understanding from other areas of the business what you what you do as a team. Um, if you if we go into one of these, I'm just going to show you the first line FAQs that's been set up. You can kind of see it's a type of information. So here you've got perhaps people from your service desk team who are posting questions or problems which they can collaborate with other members, not just in their office, but anyone who's part of this workspace to get information which can hopefully improve and help them moving forwards. And the real benefit of this is that it's all obviously not stored in email, it's not stored in the heads. Again, like I mentioned, you can search this. So if you have new starters who have the same question, they can easily search it on a single platform and um, hopefully save a lot of time and efficiency there. To create your workspace, you can simply go to My Workspaces and click on the Create Workspace option. I'm going to create one now and I'm going to call this uh, Hornbill Q&A. Now, when I'm speaking to customers who have got Hornbill um, for the first time, I always advise them to create a Hornbill Q&A because typically um, your collaborative users who have access to these workspaces will have questions about your about Hornbill. So having a, that place within Hornbill just gets them using it, gets them more used to the system, and you can also answer them through the platform itself. You can put description here. You can choose to add members. So I'm just going to choose Alan again, my colleague. And you can make it secret if you want. At the moment, it's open. So anyone, although I've added Alan, anyone could come in, see this workspace, and decide to join it. If I make it secret, it means that only people that I choose to invite would be a member or even have visibility of this workspace. So particularly good for management, for example, if you want to just have a few select people and discuss management matters. Once you've created it, you can then see that is then available. Um, I might form a post here, just say, welcome to the Hornbill um, Q&A workspace. Post that as usual. Uh, you can do a few other little extra bits and pieces here. If you go to configure, if you're the owner of the workspace, you can put in what we call a billboard. So it's just something that appears at the top so you uh, know what it's for. So I might just put, please post all Hornbill questions here. We will respond in 48 hours, something like that. And that there will just be like almost like a post-it note that appears at the top of this. And it will always be there. So you can kind of you can embed images, you can do your wiki markup on that as well to make it look a little bit more prominent. But it's just a way of uh, giving a li little bit extra script description there. Just to show you how that works, uh, if I pop over to Alan, you'll see that he now on his profile has got in his on his dashboard recently active workspaces. He's been made a member of the Hornbill QA and he's now can see those posts and that would automatically dismiss his notification. So again, I'll come back to searching that um, a little bit later, but really useful. I would just certainly advise as a takeaway today, if you haven't already got a workspace, create a Hornbill Q&A one, see how it goes, get add a few members and get them using it. Moving on, um, what we have got, if I just pop back to my newsfeed, one of the useful other pop-out options on the right-hand side here are bookmarks. Now, bookmarks um, are a feature where if you have something that you want to refer back to in the future, just like any other bookmark, I suppose, you can actually mark it and access it at any, at any point. So I'm going to scroll down to um, this one here. This is really good information. I'm going to need to use this lots of times, but I don't want to have to search or navigate to it every single time. What I'm going to actually create is a new bookmark category to begin with. I'm going to call this, and these are all personal, by the way. It's not, not a global setting. So I'm going to call this something like really useful info. And once I've created that bookmark, I can choose the post that I want. You've got these little options, this little three, three small dots against uh, all posts within Hornbill. 
And you can then from there have these additional advanced options and one of them is add bookmark. It gives me my category that I've just created and that will then add it to that particular category, which means wherever I am, it doesn't matter if I'm in a document, whether I'm in an asset, if I come in here and click on this, it's going to take me back to that post. So really nice little feature. You can also um, bookmark a whole page by clicking the bookmark cover page option here. You can filter your bookmarks like a quick filter if you have lots of them. And something that's a little bit hidden away, but particularly useful is a history option, which gives you kind of a history of all the previous Hornbill pages that you've been on. So if there's something recently that you were on, you can just go back to it and have a little search. Um, another feature, again, which is collaborative specific is achievements. So, uh, sorry, conversations. I'll move on to achievements afterwards. But conversations is kind of Hornbill's instant messaging um, star system. Um, it's really good for quick instant messages, a little bit like Skype or something along those lines where you uh, just need to get a response from an individual. Perhaps you don't want to post it on an entire collaborative workspace uh, for this particular purpose. Um, it's really easily accessible as well. We've even got our own little conversation pop out there. So you can start a new conversation from here. I might create a new one here and I'm going to call this one um, report required. I'm going to add in Alan, but you could add in multiple members to your conversation if you want. And I'm just going to write something like, um, let's say, please, because I have the latest weekly report. Uh, you can put in everything else as you usually can on any post within Hornbill. But if I click send, that now turns into its own conversation. If I click the header here, you can get it, see it a little bit more um, well, in a larger capacity rather than from your pop out if you want to uh, post or see that read it a little more clearly. But if we go back to Alan's profile, you'll notice that he's now got a little orange notification over on the right hand side, which says that he's been mentioned and he can actually respond here straight back to Graham. So that's conversations. Uh, there's not very much more to conversations, but it's very simple to use. The real benefit, again, I would kind of refer back to with this is it's really easy to search. If you want to kind of search back on a conversation you've had, you wouldn't be able to necessarily do that if you're doing the conversations through a separate platform. If you're doing it all within Hornbill, it's all stored and you can get back to that key information as quickly as you possibly can. I will now just move on to uh, achievements. It's the next one down on the list. And do you, achievements is kind of the gamification of Hornbill. Um, it's a way of kind of not just boosting morale, but also um, perhaps even cre increasing a bit of competition, certainly on something like on a service desk where you want people to respond on, or so I should say resolve as many requests as possible. Having little bonuses or badges on your profile can be a bit of a perk and a little bit of a uh, incentive. Um, you can see you can create different categories. We've got a category specific for the support desk here. And then you create the individual achievements within that category. So if I click on add, I could create one here, which is called something like Top Resolver this week. Uh, I need to put in a reason as well. Let's just say for the, for the agent who has resolved the most incidents this week. Something simple like that. Click on Create. And what you can then do once you click on that is associate it to a little one of our little kind of icons here. Let's just choose the tick and uh, save that. And at the moment, it is a bit of a manual process. So what it would be is uh, as an individual, I might choose a coworker that I want to uh, associate this uh, or award this to. I'm going to choose Alan again. He's getting picked on a bit today. But uh, if we just hover over him, click on the award option, you get the categories and then the individual ones. I'm going to award that and that will just be posted to his buzz. So going back to the start, whoever follows him will see that award at the top of their newsfeed. One of the, I mean, at the moment, this is still fairly simple. It's an easy thing to use. So I would, um, if you're interested in it, give it a little go. One of the things we're looking to do in the future is get this a little bit more automated. So, you know, look at look at actually the stats, the um, your actual analytics, who has resolved the top number of requests this week and then be able to automatically do those awards. So that's something that we can hopefully look forward to in the future. But at the moment, it's uh, simply a great case of creating your achievements and awarding them to who you, you feel deserves them at that point in time. 
Now, I'm going to end today on the um, global search because I've talked quite a lot on the uh, information in relation to being able to retain your key data. Um, there's a few things that you've got available and you would have seen this global search uh, if you've logged into Hornbill before because it's always visible on the screen at the top. Now when you, um, I'm just going to go back to the home page, you can kind of see this is always static. When you click on it, you get various different options. Now you may not have all of these options because these are completely dependent on the apps that you have installed within Hornbill. If you don't have document manager, you're not going to get that document option and so on. But there's a few of these which are really uh, useful to kind of know how to search. Um, one of the first one that I um, will kind of show you is workspaces. If I search for something in workspaces, for example, VPN, you can kind of see I get 11 results back. Not, too, not a huge number, but when you are doing a global search, you do have this little drop down on workspaces that allows you to add additional filtering. Um, if you know the date or who posted what you're looking for. Um, or even just want to search a particular workspace, you can pick this based on the workspaces that you have access to. I'm looking for VPN and first line FAQs, and you can see that narrows it right down to just two results there. So that's absolutely uh, vital if you've got a huge number of posts and people are really buying into the collaborative side of things, certainly with workspaces. You've got the um, ability to search the conversations. I referred to that earlier. But as I mentioned, if I just want to quickly find the conversation I had with someone where I was talking about reports, I can search that and there's the one I just had five minutes ago with Graham. You know, it takes me straight back into it. Um, requests, obviously another big one. There's lots of different ways of searching requests within Hornbill. If you're in Service Manager, you've got the quick filters, you've got the views, you've got our kind of advanced search as well. But if you're just within your global search and somewhere else within Hornbill, you can still use the requests option here, up here. I might search for the word report here. This bring only, I've only got two requests in Hornbill that have the word report, but um, what you can effectively do is also have additional drop down options, which just like the workspaces, which allow you to search on whether it was an incident or a problem. So if I'm just looking for incidents, it's just going to give me the wrong result. The status, the owner, the customer, um, the service, which is particularly useful. And we've got some a couple of new features as well. And so by default, this global search and requests will be looking at the summary description and the, the standard details of your particular request. If you are looking to search on the timeline of the request, you can actually do that specifically now with this drop down. So that will actually now search every single post that has been made on the timeline of the request and bring back all of the, all of the results. So something that's been requested for a long time is now available to you. We can go back to the details there as well. Um, one last thing here, if you are a previous SupportWorks customer and you've migrated requests into Hornbill, you'll also see a third option, which I don't have here, but which is called historic updates. And that allows you to search any of the historic support work updates as well. Um, so you will have three options. And one final little collaborative feature, which I know uh, not everyone is fully aware of, but if you are one of a quick way of doing a uh, request search, if you're in Hornbill and you want to just press Again, anywhere at all, press Control, Shift and F on your keyboard, it will bring up a little quick search prompt. And from there, if you know the reference and you want to go straight into it, we can do that and it takes you straight in again. So a nice little pop up which you can use if you uh, have copied the reference or you know what it is and uh, want to get into it immediately. OK, so quite a lot of features there. Uh, appreciate uh, we got through a fair bit. Um, Hopefully there's a few bits and pieces there which you will take away, uh, potentially go on to use. But um, yeah, what I'm going to do is hand you back to Pat. If you do have any questions about any of this, um, please com communicate with us via the usual means. The forums are particularly useful. The wiki has information about all this. But I'll hand back to Pat now just to uh, finish off the collaboration uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Paul. Quite a lot of information there, folks. So uh, hope that was uh, useful to you. And uh, I just want to finish off and just basically saying that things are changing. Um, we, we all work these days for modern companies and uh, what we want to avoid is a head office that looks like this, but a digital workplace that feels like that. So really what I'm saying is if we don't own this, somebody else will. So it's a change or be change. So you'll see there's a timeline here from innovation to disruption, and we can innovate and kind of doing the same things better. So, you know, it, it, but once you start doing new things, you're on your way to disrupting yourself. 
and you truly disrupt yourself when you're doing new things that make old things obsolete. So let me give you an example how we're doing that era home bill. Um, I can't remember, well, it does happen from time to time, but my internal email from people at home bill is pretty much zero most days, unless a customer forwards something or anything like that. Um, and what this allows us to do is to commun communicate far better across the uh, the silos we have within our organization, development, support, you know, sales, marketing, um, all of them actually collaborating, working together as one company. As I mentioned earlier on, one focus on the customer, uh, one organization and one goal. So what this allows you to do is to kind of connect your silos. Now, it's suggested that silos are a, a kind of a bad thing, a legacy throwback to command and control hierarchies, but actually silos are incredibly important. Um, so within your organization, uh, silos allow you to organize yourself around a specific uh, specialization or discipline. Uh, it allows you to set your own rules for how things work and allows people to kind of access expertise in those silos. But uh, silos aren't bad but they are bad when they don't talk to each other. And as we go forward as organizations, your, your customers do not see your silos. They see one organization. And if your processes or your internal communication causes them to repeat themselves or, or delay something for them, you're setting a negative experience. So this is not about tearing down silos. It is about connecting them. So how do you start? So if, if you're doing this, Really, the first thing is that this is not about collaboration technology. It's a solution to a business problem. What I'd say is you need to find that purpose of a collaboration first. Because what happens is if you bring something new into your organization, people will flock there, they'll have a look and go, oh, this is pretty cool. And you'll get this swell of people who want to collaborate. And then they'll go back to the old ways of doing things. And it will um, adoption will drop like a stone. So the purpose for collaboration, that could be, um, you know, you've got a particular project you want to push out. Uh, you're trying to get change management stood up uh, or maybe more agile or you're trying to get problem management working or push out self-service uh, and you want to collaborate with people to, to, to do that. So that's the purpose and um, that has to be purposeful collaboration. But this is really important, making a desti destination application. What I mean by that is where people do their work. So if you look at Microsoft Outlook, that's something that everyone has opened under a desk at all times. Um, and if you, um, if, if you get to the stage where collaboration is a destination application, like Bob was just showing you there, we actually do work there. Uh, collaboration happens as a matter of course. Uh, if you give people something else to do with a bolt-on collaboration app, you will not have the same effect. So start with a small uh, group key influencers if you can, set up a few of those boards, boards and workspaces that Bob just took you through a moment ago and get some useful content in there. Things like sharing knowledge, sharing documents, posting information about ideas. So you need to lead by example. This is really important as well. Um, uh, I know our CEO did this and I know some of our customers do this, but um, a good example of how to reinforce good practice would be if someone sends you an email, if it's appropriate, Pick the workspace that it should belong in, post the email into the workspace and reply through there. People will soon get the message and it will stop them from slipping back into old ways. I encourage people to share their experiences, but be patient and persistent because it really is worth it. Collaborators advantage. So this was a study done by McKinsey and a few others. In fact, there's data from a lot of sources. But uh, what it essentially says is that uh, collaboration gives you quicker and faster access to critical business information allows you to identify subject matter experts. It gives you access from mobile devices that allows you to deliver projects on time and it fosters innovation right across your organization. And trust me, having worked this way at Hornbill, if you took away our collaboration tools now, we would really struggle to work in the way that we currently do. It would be a far less engaging environment. And as that McKinsey study found is that after implementing collaboration software, you get an average 20 to 25% increase in the productivity of knowledge workers. So I just want to kind of tidy up here by uh, finish up by, by talking to you about one of our customers. They're a classic customer from 2008. And I remember at the time I was talking to uh, their service delivery managers and they were struggling with all the usual stuff, you know, providing self-service that uh, none of their customers were using, uh, trying to get problem management established, uh, trying to get knowledge management more effective. And, um, 
in about 2015, their CEO realized that actually you, his government funding, his funding from the government was actually going to dry up. So Aylesbury Vale District Council, um, their CEO, Andrew Grant, said, right, okay, we need to be more commercial as an organization. One of the first impacts on the IT organization was he decided that they wanted to go 100% infrastructure free. So they were first uh, local authority in the country to go 100% Amazon Web Services. Uh, and they came to us and said, look, we want uh, a new cloud-based tool. We don't want to, to just move to the cloud and do what we're always doing. We want to change the way people work. They, with 100% cloud infrastructure, they, uh, they needed strong supplier relationships, but collaboration was really, really important. And they got that stood up and running within 30 days and uh, rolled it out. Now, other parts of the business were paying attention and thought, wow, this is pretty good. Uh, and they all wanted in on the action. So the next step for them was to get enterprise service management up and running. Uh, and that happened, and as you'll see here on the right-hand side, they've won multiple awards over the last few years. Council of the Year, Service Excellence Award, um, an Innovation Award. Their Service Desk won the Best uh, best Service Desk for, from SDI. And last year, um, the, the organization won the Professional Service Management Award for Digital Transformation. So if you want to get things moving at your company, collaboration is where it starts. Um, get it working because I can guarantee you, your teams will thank you. It'll be the most liberating thing that you can do for them and your entire IT organization will be far more effective as a whole. So we're going to leave it there. We've just run two minutes over. So I'd like to thank you for your time and attention there. Our contact details are there again. And what I will do is just basically uh, move you on to a questions facility. So if any of you got, got questions, if you can please use the uh, the little questions facility on the right hand side of your your uh, screen and ask us any questions. Um, so, okay, we we we've got one coming in here. So the rest of you, if you've uh, you've got uh, questions to ask, please pop them in now. Um, and I think it's a question for Bob. Can you use the global search to search multiple words or strings of words? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can actually. So um, if I just uh, navigate back to the request up here. So um, if I pop back up, what you can actually do is uh, use, um, well, if you're looking to search multiple words, so you're looking for any post that contains, um, for example, both of two words, let's pick um, VPN. Uh, so I'll go for... VPN and then use the AND operator between them and then up, say upgrade. That should, that should bring back any post that has those two words within the details of that. Um, so you can kind of actually see there, I've got three, uh, upgrade VPN software, upgrade VPN uh, software, upgrade VPN. If I, if I was actually looking for an, uh, an actual string, because that is just looking for them anywhere within the, uh, the area. What I can do is use just use the quotation marks, just like you would do on any other search engine. So, for example, if I put security patch, that actually then brings back the requests that have the whole string of security patch in there. Okay, thank you very much, Bob. Uh, we have another question coming in here, if I can uh, manage to see it. Right. Uh, okay, and uh, oh, where is this one? Uh, right, uh, okay. Right, yeah, another question. Just wanted to say thanks for some great tips. And the use of forward slash was new to me, but would like to see some additional options, i.e. Uh, co-worker. Yeah, that's certainly something that we can uh, we can feedback. That the forward slash is something that... Um, is, is fairly new. We have been recently adding stuff to that, so the co-worker is definitely a good addition, and we'll, uh, we'll consider that, and uh, I'll feed that back to the developers. Okay, folks, um, so let me just go back to uh, here again, um, and I'd like to say thank you very much for your time and attention, but um, please note that we do have, you'll see the URL at the top, a Hornbill Academy or an events page now, uh, the next one you'll see here is on the 15th of August, Hornbill Academy, uh, using change management successfully within Hornbill, followed by top tips and tricks to enhance the uh, Hornbill uh, portal user experience. So those will be coming up. If you uh, want to attend them, just all you've got to do is register. 
And I'd like to say thank you very much, and we hope to be speaking to you all sometime very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Pat and Bob, for taking us through that presentation. I hope everyone found it useful. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact me or your relationship manager. Thank you and goodbye.